Hi, it's Hope and welcome to the video. This is going to be my mid-month wrap-up and this is going to be really quick because so far, as of the 15th of February, I have only read five books, but I do have two started. Um, so let's just jump straight in to The Shadow Between Us by Trisha Levenseller and I gave this a five star. Um, the Shadow Between Us, we, fall, we follow Alessandra who has one, has like one kind of goal and that is to, well one goal, three parts, to um, enter the Shadow King's court, to marry the Shadow King, and to kill the Shadow King, and take his, his like lands for her own. Now this plan starts to go as it does. And Alessandra gets close to the Shadow King, a.k.a. Callias, and we go from there, and it's their story, how she originally wants to kill him, and then kind of realizes that maybe she doesn't. Um, and this, I loved, I read this in one night, one night but two sittings, I read a bit then I watched a TV show and then I watched I read enough I read a bit more because I was like I need to know how this ends and I loved it um Alessandra and Callias are just two very morally gray characters that is one thing that I love is they're morally gray um I love the way Alessandra kind of doesn't take shit from anybody and she doesn't fit the like societal norms for female. Females are typically supposed to kind of just be quiet in the background. Um, she definitely doesn't do that, as we know in the book. Um, but she just very is just kind of like, I do what I want. I do what I want, and I do it. However, that like, if that makes any sense, and um all of that and this is just a really good it's a standalone I wish it was a little bit longer and maybe a little bit more heavy on the romance but in saying that I do really love it and this is this I said on my like Instagram review that this is my all-time favorite fantasy standalone I've only read like f um, six or so um, fantasy standalones so I haven't read that many, but this is one is by far like my favorite that I've read. Next we have An Air Comes to Rise by C.C. Penaranda. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that last name correct, um, but An Air Comes to Rise, we follow Faith, um, who is a human who lives in the like outer sectors of a city, and we're in this world where there's Fae, and Fae are kind of the ones that kind of more, more or less rule the city. Um, and when Faith discovers that she has um, this magical ability that only Faye typically have, she has to figure out how to control it with the help of a Faye who has the same abilities named Nick. And that is just kind of the base of this plot. It's like very, very, it's like the very basic bit, but I like this. Um, I gave this a four star. Um, Faith is a really good main character. She's really badass. She does, um, this is, like, it's not a spoiler, but, like, um, into, like, some important point, at some point in the book, she ends up starting to do these, like, um, underground fights to bring in money for her and her best friend, who both of them don't have the best paying jobs. Um, Faith is an orphan, which is a classic, like, YA fantasy thing but this I it didn't feel like bad or anything um the fae in this um series are just okay though there's nothing special I did really like her her like magical abilities people with her magical abilities are called night walkers and essentially they can go into the minds of other people um in their dreams type thing um, and I did really like this. I am curious on where this series is going to go because where we ended off, um, we ended off on a note that I wasn't expecting and the epilogue especially has me questioning, but this book, 
um, this I read in Arco and it doesn't come out till the 28th of February, so we aren't getting the sequel for months down the line, um, but I did really like it, and it's a debut, so... Next, I reread Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. <laughs> Interesting fact, I didn't want to originally have to read this at the beginning of the month, but I had to because my copy of Rune and Rising took forever to get here. So I ended up after Siege and Storm reading Six of Crows and then now I'm currently reading Rune and Rising. But Six of Crows is the first book in a um, like fantasy duology. The duology now, it's going to be expanded sometime in the future. I don't know when. But where we follow six, um, essentially like six teenagers who are doing this impossible heist. They are part of um, well, most of them are part of a gang and all of that. I, I, when in doubt, I, this is a third read through. This is the third time I've read this book and I've managed to fall in love just as much. I, this, the, this is like my all time favorite duology is Six of Crows and then the, um, second book in the series, Crooked Kingdom. I'm rereading, I'm rereading the entire Grishaverse not only for the TV show that comes out April 23rd, but also for Rule of Wolves, which comes out March 30th. Um, but I just love these characters. I love this series. You can tell, like, I've tabbed a lot of the, like, it, like, like moments that I liked, um, dialogue that I like, backstory, all of that. Um, and I just, I don't have much to say about this because I, I talk about it so much. Like I read this series first in end of October 2019, then I read it, I read this book in July of 2020, and then now February 2021. This is like a book that I will be rereading every single year, if not twice a year. But I just enjoy it so much. I love all of the characters. And I will just be a broken record about this book for the rest of my life. Next we have Shadow Rule by Angela J. Stuffer. And this is the third book in the Shadow Kingdom series, so I cannot explain much of this. I gave this a five um I gave this a five star. And this doesn't come out till February 28th. But Shadow Rule is again the third book in the Shadow Kingdom series, so I cannot explain Shadow Rule that much, but I can kind of explain um Shattered Kingdom. So Shattered Kingdom, we follow a girl named Gandrit who um, at seven years old was taken from her family to the um, Kamala Desert to be trained in a kind of like sanctuary to be to be the, like the child of Vala who is a goddess and essentially she learns how to fight and worship this goddess but when she's one, but ten years later she's one year until she's like completed training she is taken from the sanctuary by like she is like taken from a sanctuary by a fae named Nahilon I think that's how you pronounce his name um so that she can work for um Nahilon's boss who and Gandra is sent on this kind of like mission to do something that ends up turning into this much bigger plot and this and the second book Wicked Crown, we continue on, um, and the villain is really good, and then the third book, we kind of almost take a pause on the current plot, and we end up traveling to Fae to break a curse that was placed on the Fae 400 years ago, and the only Fae that is not affected is Nihilon, um, and we do see a bit of the point of views from everyone else in the story as well, but just only a couple of chapters each. So the f that's kind of really all I can explain. I absolutely love this series. Like the um, the second book was in my top ten books of 2020. I love this series, and I but I do think Shadow Rule is my least favorite, just because it almost felt like we were taking a step back and not a step forward. But I still do love it, and I am excited to see where Lost Towers goes, which is the fourth book in the series, which is coming out, I believe, this summer. But I'm really excited for this, and this is a series that I love. It is, it is a, um, like, I think it's a self-published series. I'm not sure. It's on Kindle Unlimited, um, and all of that. 
And then the final book that I finished this month is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, and I'm giving this a 3.5. Um, in These Violent Delights, we follow kind of like two main characters. We follow Juliet, who is the heir of the Scarlets, which is a which is one of the two gangs in Shanghai. We are in the year 1926, and we follow Juliet and Roma, and Roma is the the heir to the um, White Flowers, which is um, the like Scarlet, like opposing gang. They're like they're two opposing gangs, and Roma and and Roma and Juliet must come together and deal with the events that happened in their past, as well as deal with this mysterious illness, um, like plaguing Shanghai and all of that while their families hate each other, they hate each other. It's like a, it is based on where we are at. It is a enemies to, f to lovers, to enemies to lovers, to enemies. And I'm assuming then to lovers, like, it's a, it's a big thing. Um, that's really much the only thing I liked is Juliet and Roma's, like, I hate you, but I still have these feelings for you when back from four years ago and all of that. And it's just very, like, all that. I do feel like this almost would have been better without the fantasy element which is something that like I never thought I'd say but the fantasy element is um it just kind of felt like I didn't understand it like how it got like how this thing happened like why there's this fantasy element it almost would have been better if it wouldn't have had this fantasy element but it might make more sense in the um sequel which is Our Violent Ends which comes out in November November 16th, I think is the date, um, which I will definitely be reading because I did really like this, but I did like this. I don't have much more to say. So those were the five books that I read. I, like, um, um, like I have 15 books on my TBR, and I read five, so that means I have 10 more books to read in 13 days. And I ended up adding one, so it's actually 16. So, like, um, I'd be very, very, very shocked if I get my entire TBR done this month. But that's okay. That's okay because I started working more. I now work, like, every single, like, Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturdays, versus January. I was only working every Friday. So, like, I don't have as much time and also school. Uh, but I hope to read a lot more. Again, I currently have, like, two books started. But I hope you enjoy this video and bye!